We're working on our 72 GS today, 455. And a little tip about oil changing, which, uh, you know, being a Buick guy, I should have thought of it. But I changed the oil on the car and I got interrupted. I wasn't able to finish it, so I didn't get the uh, oil filter in place and didn't get the engine started. Well, it sat for probably a month before I got back to it. And, yeah, the oil drained back into the oil pan, and when I got the filter on there and filled it up with oil, at no oil pressure. So, not unusual on some of these engines, uh, especially a Buick. I've never had it happen because I've never let it sit that long without uh, putting the filter on it and starting the engine. But, um, what was kind of good about that is I had to pull the distributor out because I bought one of these tools on Amazon for priming the oil pump. And the only thing I did have to do to it, it was really rated for uh, Chevrolet engines, but it fit in there really nice. Uh, I'd, I'd give you a link to this, but you know how that goes on Amazon. A year or two from now, the link's going to be dead because they just keep changing manufacturers or where they get these things made overseas. But that inside uh, flat in there, I had to uh, machine down a little bit so it would engage the oil pump drive shaft down in there. I did that on a mill. I'm a tool and die maker, so it was easy enough for me to do. Went in there and I, uh, you can kind of see how that's machined, that flat that's in there that creates that key. Comes apart real easy. There's just a roll pin here that you knock out. This outer sleeve comes off, exposing that uh, tang for driving the oil pump. One thing that I did notice taking this apart, good thing, is I was having an electrical malfunction. So it's darn good it happened to me, I guess, because I was pretty close to being stranded somewhere. So something went wrong with the ignition here, which I'm going through. But uh, so sometimes they say a blessing in disguise because the insulator that sits on top of here was all skewed and everything. So I had it into a shop here and there, and I don't know if someone had this apart and didn't put it back together right. Uh, the insulator wasn't in the right place, was slid off to the side. So I, I'm not quite sure what's happened here. But... Driving that oil pump, you know, you can see the, uh, oh, there you go. You can see it real easy, the tang that you have to engage down in there for driving the oil pump. This tool fits in there really nice. Just engage the pump and put your, I just used a uh, cordless drill motor clamped on here and rotate. It was reasonably fast. It was a DeWalt. I got one, two, three. Uh, setting number two was good enough for me to start to see oil pressure climbing on my gauge inside the car. So now I'm ready to fix this distributor and get it back into the engine here and start her up. The distributor here I've been working on, you can see I can't even believe this engine was still running. Look at the bottom of that coil, it's just toast. Here's that insulator I was talking about that was not in the right place, it was like slid off to the side. Rotor, yeah, it's not looking so good either. But I was able to get some parts here and I'm putting together the uh, new distributor setup, cap, coil. I really liked my old Mallory that was in the car at one time and that's what melted down. Well, these aren't even available anymore. So I'm putting together a different system here. I got the coil from Napa and I got a cover plate goes on there. That's going to fit real nice. Not going to look as slick as I guess the Mallory used to look, but it'll do the job. Make sure you got your ground in there. You know, this ground strap that's down in here. I got one laying off on the side. That's something people miss. And here's this ground wire coming off the coil. That ground strap goes underneath the coil and creates a grounding system to the tang that's part of your plugins that uh, are part of the system when you snap everything back together. New rotor. 
I'm working on the actual distributor itself because I was messing around with that. I did find that the parts that were in there uh, don't really look that good. So I had uh, some of the plastic connectors were cracking and things. So I've got a, a new one that I'm going to be putting in there. So it was a good time to go through everything. Uh, with what the distributor went through with the meltdown, uh, I'm also going to be replacing some of the other items inside. Here we're looking at the module wiring harness here. We're going to be putting a new module in also. The uh, old one, yeah, I kind of mentioned a little bit earlier, it was getting cracked and the wiring just looked pretty tired. This distributor is new in about 2001, so yeah, that's enough years to cause it to start to break down some of this stuff. But I was able to get a uh, GM unit here that's all included, so this uh, actual uh, mount and everything is all built right in and it slides into the housing, which I'll show you in a little bit. But it's kind of a slick little unit here. I got this, uh, it's an AC Delco product. Actually, got it on Amazon, real fair price. And I got the little mounting screw sitting off to the side that mounts the uh, little, uh, gee, I think capacitor. <laughs> I'm not an expert on this stuff, I'm going to tell you. I'm a shade tree mechanic. So if you're looking for a General Motors authorized wrench, that's not me. But I've been working on this stuff since these cars were almost new. So, yep, I've been around for a few years, so I'm quite familiar with this old stuff. I got this module from Napa, and it's still made here in the States, an Eklund unit, which is kind of why I would always try to buy my stuff from them. Uh, the coil, they used to be made here in the States, but not anymore. You know, it's a uh, Napa coil, but it's made in China. But a lot of these older parts now, that's kind of what you have to live with. It's getting harder and harder to find that this stuff made domestically. Before putting the module in the distributor, you want to put a uh, thin coat of thermal grease on the bottom of the module here. That helps uh, dissipate the heat into the body of the distributor. So it's a little kit I got out there and uh, it's got a little nozzle that goes on the end for a little finer tip if you want. It has a little uh, spreader stick and I'm going to use that and put a fine coat on the bottom of here and uh, that should help with the heat uh, you know distribution back into the distributor so that's a step you want to remember to do and uh, it's kind of a helpful thing because uh, the distributor may not be perfectly flat on its mounting surface uh, this may not be perfectly flat and the idea of this thermal grease is it's supposed to kind of even out the uh, contact surface for heat distribution underneath the module. We have the module now mounted in the distributor plugged in put a little dielectric grease on the terminals and yeah this is a really nice little unit fits right into the distributor nests right into this little opening on the side little notch and there's the little screw holding the capacitor down fits in there really nice kind of nice little plug in there to go into the distributor cap so this distributor is still in good shape. You know, I could go nuts trying to clean it all out, uh, you know, pull the whole thing apart, try and make it perfect. But uh, I put a little bit of money into this distributor. When it's done, I might have oh, 80 bucks, 100 bucks into repairing it. Uh, if it needs any more along the way here, I'm just going to buy a new distributor. But this thing should give me quite a few years of service, for, especially for the amount that we drive this car. It is not an everyday driver. Cap is put together now. Got the dust cover on there. It's ready to go. Going to get the distributor into the engine now. And I had made a few marks on the distributor housing 
and the engine block, a few other marks to reference. So when I drop it back down in there, I should be okay with my timing. If not, I, I know how to work around that. So we'll get the distributor in and uh, get this thing brought back to life. Putting the distributor back in is pretty easy. As long as you set yourself up properly in the beginning, I'd mark the housing. You can see down there, I've got a mark. Uh, let's get my finger in there. I've got a little Sharpie mark there to kind of help me locate the housing with the uh, front of the engine there where the distributor goes into the hole. And what I had done is I had taken pictures of the distributor so I could actually use reference marks, reference points. Uh, I can see like this tab where it is. It's just barely, uh, you know, south, if you will, of the screw. And a couple other, you know, markers in here that help me visually see where I'm at, reference points. So when I drop the distributor back in, I line up that Sharpie mark. The only thing was, uh, you know, some people will rotate the engine once they've got the cam engaged to the uh, distributor and they'll drop it down onto the oil pump drive. Me, I just pulled the distributor in and out about three times, visualizing the tang on the bottom of the distributor with the drive of the oil pump adjusted with a screwdriver, the drive of the oil pump, till it dropped in. A little bit of a pain, but... Like I've done it a few times over the years. It only took me three times to make that happen. I didn't have to bother rotating the engine. So we're going to move on to the uh, final assembly. The distributor is in. We've got our vacuum line hooked up. Got our wiring sitting here waiting for the distributor cap. We're now going to put the new cap on and transfer the wires over. So it's good to kind of leave it off to the side, still all connected, helps you put them back together and a little bit quicker to get your firing order right. So we're going to get this distributor put together and bring this GS back to life. Well, the new module we had put in the distributor actually failed after five minutes of running. So we put the old module back in, which was still good. And I'm running a little test here that someone uh, recommended online. And I put a jumper wire up underneath there with an alligator clip to the TAC terminal. You know, it says tachometer, might be visible there. But on the tachometer terminal, and they said when you crank the engine, if the module is good, you should see the test light strobing. And when I tested it with the bad module, the test light was on but very dim and it didn't strobe. So now we put the old module back in and when we crank the engine, we get a nice bright strobe. All right. Yep. Yeah, so it's a nice solid bright and it strobes when you crank the engine. Well, she's up and running now. Swapped out that module, put the old one in, and it's running good. Bring on springtime. 